Hi. Yes, perfect. I'm Magnus. I come to you live from Husøy, the island you can see in the picture. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, transformation in data warehouses and uh, my problems with DBT and if we can see if something like SQL Mesh, a new framework I found, if that can take over and solve our problems. Um, 10 minutes, 26 slides, I think we'll just get going. Uh, we at uh, BR Carlsen, we are a seafood company. We come from Senja, very far up north in Norway. Uh, we send uh, our fish all the way all around the world. Um, we do both salmon all the way from the eggs to fillets, and we also do white fish from the ocean and all the way to the tables. People are eating it. Uh, we have around 40 million meals every year that we send out into the world. Um, right now, I am creating a cloud data warehouse up here. Um, I have a background from Google before, as you can see from the services being used, mostly Google Cloud. Um, and here I am talking about our issues with transformation in the warehouse. So for the warehouse, we are getting data from lots of sources. Uh, it can be databases, it can be files, lots of APIs from SaaS applications. And we need to mash this up and transform it into something usable we can put analytics on, or if we want to send the data to somewhere else. But we need, need to get the data in and clean it and join it together and make sense out of it before we can put a tool on top of it. Earlier, um, this was often done in tools like Informatica or Oracle, or there were huge suites of tools that did this transformation. Uh, the issue here was, of course, the tool dragged it out, transformed it on the server, and then put it back into a database. It was really slow. It was really, really expensive. And there were no multi-tenant multi or multi-user experience. You couldn't work with several people at the same time. Uh, people were running into each other's feet. And it was really hard to keep track of changes. So what has happened now is that we, want, we don't want a tool. We want more of a framework uh, in the modern days. And we want it, of course, to be code first. We want code in our, to, because then we can use all the tools that are being developed by the software community. So we can use Git, we can use CI, CD, and run data ops on this code. We want it to be open and scalable. We want it to be open so we can plug other tools into it. We want to integrate it with different things. Um, so this is sort of things we need from our tool today. Alternatives I've looked at, now in 2023, uh, DBT is, of course, the big one. Uh, it started in 2016, now an, an old tool in, in the modern data stack. Um, there are also other tools like Malloy. It's a Google tool, which tries to be both a semantic layer and transformation. They compile. They made a new language, is SQL-ish. It compiles down into SQL. Dataform is sort of similar to DBT. And then SQL Mesh, which I'll talk more about today, is sort of a mix of the two where they try to do some things really new and fresh. So in DBT, we have, uh, it is code first. So the way DBT works is that you write something that looks very much like SQL, and then you do these references in between where you can reference another object you've made earlier. And when you do this, you can then create, DBT can create for you a DAG, a direct acyclical graph, that will contain the different objects and in the, which order they need to be made. So here is an example from documentation of DBT, where they sort of start with lettuce and then chop it up and then make a salad out of it. So it's you, you move the data from stages, from the raw stage, until uh, more processed and more processed. And in the end, you get out something you can use for reporting. So these are created from the ref relationships that are made in DBT that you make in your code. But is it really code? If we look at here is a, a more advanced example of DBT. Um, you see at the top, we can see we have a configuration block. And then we start to get Jinja templated code within here that says, OK, if this is an incremental run, then you need to add the specific filters to it. And this combination of SQL with Jinja and macros it makes dbt into a language which is not it doesn't understand sql it doesn't understand what it's doing it's just applying different templates and it can get messy really 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 fast 
uh, Max, the creator of, of Superset and Apache Airflow, he, he wrote a blog article where he uh, said it was mountains of templated SQL and YAML. So in a way, it sort of feels like back in the days when we had PHP, we had HTML, which, which had the data we wanted, and we added a little bit of PHP in the middle just to make it more alive and dynamic. It's sort of the same we're doing here now. And the question is, is this the right approach? Another issue with cloud data warehouses is um, the best thing about them is that it scales with the, if you have little data, little usage, you pay almost nothing. Uh, the problem is if you have more data or very much usage, the costs go up very fast. And cost is being multiplied by if you rerun models often, or if you do testing, if you test your data, then which you should do, but then you also need to re reread the same things and, and look if the data is correct. And the more real time you go, the more you need to run the same queries again and again and again to, to make sure that uh, all the data is there and then you scan the same data again and again. And both Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift, they're all based on usage, how much CPU you use or how much data you scan. So, so this can get really expensive really fast. Like we have almost no data. But if I put two short intervals with the batching, uh, the cost rack up really fast. Another issue regarding pricing in DBT is it's getting expensive. It started out, I think, at 25 per developer per seat, but now they're at 100. And with this, you do not get single sign-on. You can only have eight seats. There's no SLA, and you only have one project. So it's it's not an enterprise solution. And for that, you need to pay even more per developer seat. And that is very expensive. So the way people are solving this is they are using dbt core, which is the open source version of dbt. And then you lose all the nice UI, and you have to do everything yourself. Uh, but the framework is the same. The issue here is, of course, more plumbing to do. It's more work for, for us. So what is SQL Mesh, and why should we care about SQL Mesh? They talk to them about themselves as a data ops framework. So they are very new. They started out this winter, uh, went out uh, public. Um, and you can deploy pipelines written in SQL or Python. The special thing about uh, SQL Mesh is that they do transpilation. Transpilation is when you, um, it's, I've often seen it before where you can take code from one language and transpile it into something else. You can do Python to Java, for instance. Uh, but here they use the translation to understand the SQL. So the big difference here is the SQL mesh actually understands the underlying SQL. It understands what you're trying to do. And then they get lots of more opportunities to, to, to make a better product. It's also stateful. So SQL mesh understands the state of the data that you have been transferring. So for instance, incremental loads, which are a pain in DBT, are much easier in SQL mesh because they can understand this, the, the dates. So, so you just say, between start date and end date with a, a variable, variable, and then they will insert this at runtime as it should be. You can also see here they have the text, the casting. They do casting in a more Python-like way. So you, it doesn't matter if you're using DuckDB or, or BigQuery or Snowflake, it will transpile it to the correct syntax for those databases, and you can get it straight in. One of the big things in SQL Mesh is that they do data virtualization. And data virtualization means that you can have the same underlying tables, but you can have many environments that are based on the same tables. So here we have a prod and a dev environment. Usually you have many dev environments, one for each developer, maybe some for testing. And here they are all views. So the models you see on the top are views and their tables are below. So you can test things in dev. And if you create a breaking change, so if you add a column, if you do something with the data, it will create a new version of the table. And then when you've tested, when it's ready to deploy into production, the view just changes. So you will change the, the production view, and you don't need to recalculate it again after you've done it. So it's way less recalculation, way less rerunning than you have to do in dbt. And they also can see, because they understand the SQL, they know if the change you're doing is breaking, or if it's just a, a, a small change that will not change the old data. So they understand everything that's going on. SQL Mesh also integrates with Airflow. And with DBT, you usually just say run, and the running itself happens in Airflow. But here, 
You can get all the different stages, and you can also save the state into Airflow, which is great. They have a UI that you spin up by yourself. You, you run it, and then it comes on your local computer, where you can see things like uh, lineage. You can have better syntax correction and everything. So again, SQL Mesh looks good. Why should we do it? Um, it's more modern. But and one more thing before I come to the conclusion, uh, DBT has raised a lot of money. And I feel like this is sort of hurting their product. They are trying to find more features to charge for. They're trying to charge more money. They're trying to expand the product to become a big platform. And maybe that's not what we want. But again, I am sticking with DBT because SQL Mesh is very fresh. It's very, very fresh. It's hard to find information about it. Documentation is great for DBT. And DBT is not just painful enough. That's how I work in cloud. If it's painful, if it's too expensive, if it's hard to work with, we usually swap something out. If it's not, we just keep going. And the ecosystem around DBT is really, really good. It integrates with absolutely everything. So I'm sticking with DBT for now. OK, thank you all. Um, add any questions to the Slack. I'll hang around there and um, see you all later.